Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about arrays in Java through an example of one of my favorite books when I was a kid called Wayside School. So if you've never read Wayside School, it's basically about this school that was supposed to be built with 100 classrooms going horizontally, however the builders messed up and built it 100 classrooms vertically. And I was thinking about this the other day and I realized that strangely enough, this perfectly represents arrays and I'll explain why. So when you think of a building, you can think of a building as something containing things. So in a building there are floors and each floor contains different things. In Wayside School, each floor is a classroom that contains a different number of students. And its floor number represents its location within the building. So if I'm in the elevator and I want to go to the third floor, I would hit three on the elevator button and I'd go up to the third floor. So in arrays, that's similarly to how it works. There's different floors which contain different things and its floor number represents its location within the array. And I can store anything in an array. I can store doubles, and strings, chars, whatever you want. But it's important to note that with arrays, I can only store specific data types in each array. So if I wanted to store an array with strings and ints in the same array, that would not be possible. I would need two separate arrays with one containing ints and the other containing strings. I can't hold them both in the same array. The other thing to note is once I create the size of my array, I can't change it. So it's just like in a building, if I have 100 stories, I can't add a story onto the top or delete a story. It's fixed and that's the same way it works in arrays. So now I'm going to represent Wayside School in our worked example. And before I do that, <laughs> I don't really want to code out a hundred stories because that would take far too long and I think it'll be easier for you guys to understand if I do a smaller example. So I'm going to quickly draw a smaller scaled wayside school um, just with four classrooms instead of a hundred and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is my smaller scaled wayside school with four classrooms instead of a hundred. And again, in my worked example, what I'm going to be representing is the number of students on each floor. So let's say on the first classroom, there are 23 students. The second floor has 31. The third floor has 29. And then the fourth floor has um, 33. Now let's actually code this out. So if we go over to our code, how do I actually create an array? So the first thing I want to specify is the data type that I'm containing. So in our worked example, we're representing the number of students on each floor. So I'm going to be using ints to represent that. So I'm going to say ints, and then I'm going to put two square brackets just like that. So that those square brackets indicate that I'm creating an array. And now I'm going to say the name of my array, which I'm going to call wayside followed by an equal sign, and then I'm going to actually create the content of my array. So there's a couple ways that I can go about creating the rest of my array. I'm going to show you the first ex the first way to do that, which is to fill in everything in the array off the get-go. So I'm going to use um, some curly braces, and I'm going to fill in um, the preceding. So I'm going to start with the first floor, so 23, followed by 31, 29, and then 33 just like that, and then um, semicolon. Never forget the semicolon. So this is my array, um, and it's very simple. So it represents what I drew over here. So now let's say I actually want to access this school. So in the real world example, if I wanna see how many students are on the third floor, I would go to the elevator and hit three, and then I would go to the third floor and see how many students there are. In our virtual example, there is no elevator. Um, so how do I actually access the array? So the way I do that is first I'm going to call the name of my array, which is Wayside. Wayside, just like that. And then I'm going to go and use the braces, the brackets, the square brackets again. Um, and then in those square brackets, I'm going to call the floor number that I want to go to. So if I want to go to the third floor, Hypothetically, I would put a three in the square braces, just like that. 
So now I actually want to print this just so I can actually see if this is working the way I want it to. So I'm going to put this in a print statement. There we go. So I've just put that in a print statement. And now if I run this, it should hypothetically print out the number of students on the third floor, which is 29. So let's run this. And as you can see, what was actually printed was 33. Why is that the case? So it's a little weird thing that happens in any language really, but instead of starting on the first floor, we start at the zeroth floor. Now the reason for this I'm not going to get into because it's kind of a long explanation, but long story short, it's how it stores it in memory. So the second floor, instead of it being at the second floor, it would be the first floor. And then the third floor would be actually the second floor. And then the fourth floor would actually be the third floor. So it stores it this way. So when I called Wayside at the third floor, it went up to the index three and printed 33. So if I actually wanted to go to the third classroom, I'm going to put in its real location, which would be two. Okay, so now that I've put two in those square brackets, it should print what's on the third floor, aka what I wanted to print, which is 29. So if I run this, it prints 29, perfect. The first way I showed you is how to create a, an array and fill it in straight from the beginning. But another way that you can create an array, if I just delete all of this, is, you can create an empty array of the size that you want and then later fill in all the values that you want. So here I'm going to create an empty array of size 4 because I have four classrooms. So I'm going to say new int square brackets and then in those square brackets I'm going to put the size of my array and I'm going to put 4. Now this is where it gets kind of confusing. So even though this is the fourth floor, if I want to access it, I have to call it at index three. So now when I'm creating an array of size four, why am I using four? So four represents the number of classrooms. But if I wanted to go to a specific classroom, I need to call its location, also known as its index within the array. So even though the fourth floor has its index at three, the number of classrooms in the school are four. So that's why I'm using four here. So I'm calling an array of size four and it's empty. Okay, so now that I have a, an empty array, let's say I actually just wanted to make sure that it's empty. I just wanna show you guys that the array I created is in fact empty. I'm going to print a location. So let's say I wanna print the um, number of students at the first index, so I want to print 31. I'm going to call system, and then I'm going to print Wayside School at um, the first index, so I'm going to say 1. And because it's empty, I shouldn't see 31. I should see 0 because it's empty. And there we go. So when I print it, we get zero at our first index. But now let's say I actually want to fill in my array. So how do I actually do that? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to call the array at the first index. So if I say wayside and then square brackets one, and then I'm going to set it equal to something. So I want to set it equal to 31 because at the first index, there are 31 students. There we go. So now if I were to print it at index one, I should see 31 now. Also, I'm realizing <laughs> I need a Y here. And if I print it at the first index, I should print 31, perfect. Oops. There we go. So now let me quickly go in and create, fill in the rest of the array and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just filled in the rest of my array. 
Um, and now let's say I want to go in and print the number of students at each floor. So I could call this print statement out for each floor. So I would call this print statement four times at zero, one, two, three. But I don't really love that because let's say we were working with the real Wayside School, which has a hundred classrooms. I don't want to call a print statement out 100 times when there's an easier way to do that. So let me show you the easier way to do that. So the way we're going to do this is with a for loop. So I'm going to say for int i is equal to zero. And what we're going to do using this for loop is we're going to cycle through each index. So we're going to go from zero to three. And at each index, we're going to print the number of students at Wayside School. So I'm going to use the variable i. So I'm going to say for in i equals zero, as long as i is less than the size of Wayside. So what is the size? So I can use Wayside dot length. And that little beautiful function is going to just return the length, which is it's actually going to return four. But this is good because when I use the less than symbol, it's always going to be less than four because four is not less than four. So it's going to go from zero to three and it's going to stop at four. Um, and then I'm going to increment it by one each time. There we go. So now in the for loop at each index, I'm going to print out keyword print. So system dot out dot print line. Um, the actual content at each index. So I'm going to say wayside square brackets. And then in the square brackets, I'm going to say I just like that. And now what it should happen is it should print out the number of students at each classroom. So if I run this beautiful, it prints out the number of students on the zero index followed by the first index, second, and then third. And that is Arrays in Java. I hope you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching and happy coding.